Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to go over repeating items and the different options that you have when you are using the word add-in. And I'm going to show you a trick that I use to build faster, which has to do with seeing all of the options that I can use unaltered within the word add-in and just creating a testing environment where you can just see what that looks like before you try to go on and build something. So this is a really good trick because it allows you to just take a look at what you might need to change or update and you can just visually see how things come out so you can kind of see where you want to add different spaces or periods or commas or whatever else when you're using uh, these different ones. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So as I mentioned, we're going to be going over the different things that you can do with repeating items. And this is a really great help article from Gavel that really helps with this kind of you know, when you're playing around with repeating items, what you're actually able to do. And one of the cool things about this article is it also talks about how you can add different text within your repeating items. And one of the things that I used to do when I was first starting out with Gavel was to think that things were like really precious, that I would like break them or something. And it's, it's okay to kind of play with something and break it when you're first testing and trying something because that shows you what you can and cannot do and the flexibility of these different kind of tools. So in this particular article, it talks about how you can intersperse repeating items with other text. You can add things like commas and different like separators and so on and so forth. Um, and also that you can kind of add text within different um, attributes within kind of a code here where you can have the word add in insert this for you and then you can just add in some text where you want so that something could be something like Jane born on this date, Jack born on this date, and Jill born on that date. And you can also do fun things like capitalize or bold and things like that. So I'm going to show you some examples, one where we do an uppercase um, and some of these other examples. So as I mentioned, one of the tricks that you can do is kind of creating a reference template, which will show you from your testing environment where you create just a simple repeating item, all option type of thing where you just have one page with one repeating item that has, let's say, two attributes. In this case, I have what's the child's first name and what's the child's date of birth. So to create this, you would just create a, let's go to the dashboard, you would just say new workflow to start from scratch because we're not using, um, well, we're using a document, but we're not using or starting from a template that would be useful for the blueprint. So just say start from scratch, give it a name, something like, you could say like testing environment, or in this case, I said something like repeating items, all options. And then I'm just going to put two here for a second so I can differentiate this from the one I already made. And in this one, we just are going to say add question and say repeating item. Give it a name, something like children, and then put in your question title. So in my case, I just asked um, what is the, let me go back to the other option. Uh, let's go into here. So I just said contact children and then I said, and this is to kind of differentiate whose children we're talking about. Um, so I just said, what's the child's name? And then I gave it a variable name of child first name. That's a text question type. And then I asked, what's the child's date of birth, child date of birth, and then had that be a date and they're both required and they don't have any logic attached to them for now. Under settings, um, what I wanted to do is make it to where when you run this, it's going to ask, do you have any children? And the reason for that is not everyone has children. So instead of having to kind of do a lot of workarounds for this, um, it's easier to just say, like, do you have any children? If they say no, they're going to skip past the repeating item. And if they say yes, then they get to enter their children's information. The other thing here is that I did uncheck collect items on a single page. So by default, it's uh, going to uh, have everything collected on a single page. Um, and by default, it's not going to ask an initial question. So when you first go in here, you're going to want to ask an initial question, have it be, do you have any children? And then 
uncheck collect items on a single page so that you can have a continuation question, something like, would you like to enter any more children? Something like that. You can also make there be minimum and maximum numbers. If you had, let's say you were filling out a PDF and you only needed the first three children or whatever else, um, then you can do that. So in this case, let's do something like contact children. And then you can see, you can put in the, the questions and variable names and so on and so forth. So let's just work off of the one that I have already created for now because we just, um, I just want to kind of show you a couple of things. So as I mentioned here, I just have the um, kind of repeating item that has the item name of contact children, first name, and date of birth as our two questions. Now in a document, this can be just one that you create from scratch. Um, what I did was I went through and I just put in list and I, so basically you just find the workflow that you want to work off of from your Word add-in. If you don't have the Word add-in, you just need to go to insert, then come over to add-ins, get add-ins, go over to the store and search for gavel. You're going to say add and continue. That's going to add the Word add-in over here onto the right and you're going to see this here. Um, and then once you do that, you just need to connect to your Gavel account through an API key. So if you go over to your dashboard, go under settings, API keys, give it a name, something like word add in like this, say create a key. That's going to give you the key to connect into your word add in along with your um, your subdomain. So you're going to have something like, uh, you know, mine was underneath this is cormayum.gavel.io. So you would do that. Or if you have a custom domain that you use, like I do here, then you'd use custom instead. Okay, so let's get back to the other section here. So as I mentioned, what I'm trying to do, the purpose of this whole exercise is to be able to visually see what each of these different options look like when you don't change anything, when you just straight put them in from the word add-in. And I'll show you kind of why that's important in a second. So what I did was I created that test repeating item and put in those different variable names and questions. And then I just went into the word add-in, found the one that I created here from my options. So test repeating all options, repeating items, all options. And then I went down here to the toggle that says repeating items so that I could work within that section. And what I'm trying to do is visually see what are the different options I can format different entries as. So in this case, I have list, multi-line list, list commas, list Oxford comma, the semicolon, list custom separator, refer to next item, table, item number, and generate multiple documents. Now, one of the things that I find really helpful is to go through this exercise of actually physically going through and seeing what it looks like on output for each of these different things, because then I know what is available to me when I'm trying to build something. Now you're welcome to just kind of watch this and then you can just see what it looks like. But if you want to go through this exercise as well, essentially what you're going to do is just give the name of whatever format it is. And then I just said something like one attribute unaltered, meaning I chose one attribute such as what is the child's first name from the repeating item contact children. And I inserted that field under here and this is what it looks like when the um, word add-in inserts that for you. So for example, if I were going to add this again, I would just say insert field and it's going to do all of that code for me and I don't have to do anything. But it's helpful to see how that was structured in case I want to add a space add a comma, add anything else, I can know where to do that um, by referencing what that looks like on output. For example, you can see here that once I ran this particular document through the exercise of going through and making it to where I had different children who exist in this 
you know, fake example, um, I was able to see that I put child one, child two, and child three. And I can see that on output, if I do nothing but just insert this from the word add-in, then they're going to get squished together. So I need to know how I want to structure this. Do I want to have commas between them? Do I want to have a space? Do I want to have them underneath each other or whatever else? So you just know and can see what happens when you have one attribute and when you have two. Then you can make decisions about it because you know what it looks like. For the multi-line list, which is the second option here, then I was able to see that if I just insert one attribute, it's going to come out where it goes one, two, three. If I have two, it's going to go the first child's name and then their second attribute and then the second and then the second attribute. So I know that this second attribute, which is their date of birth, comes underneath the child's name rather than, let's say, next to it, for example. Okay, good to know. So I can understand how these different uh, attributes are going to be structured on output. The other one would be list commas, for example. So if I go down to list commas, I can see that this is going to be with one attribute, child one, child two, and child three. Child one, their second attribute, child two, their second attribute, and child three, their second attribute. This is the one where you can see the first name made all caps. I was just kind of playing with from this repeating items within text, how to do this here where you have the uh, dot upper and parentheses added. So this is a little bit altered by me going in and actually physically typing in this section here of this code. So I just inserted this from the word add in here and then just went in and typed in this section here. And that made it to where that first name is going to be in all caps for each of those instances of um, the child's first name. So then if you distinguish the commas from the Oxford commas, you're going to see that it appears in here. So instead of it being child one, child two, no comma, and child three, we have a comma added here called an Oxford comma. You can see how this looks with two attributes. We can also see for a semicolon that when you have one attribute, it's going to come out like this. When you have two, it's going to have the first attribute a comma, and then the second attribute, in this case, their date of birth, then the semicolon appears after here. For the custom separator, this is good for things like if you want to use an ampersand instead of and, for example, or if you want to use something from a different language like like Y for and within Spanish or whatever else, you can list your custom separator. In this case, I used an ampersand, so I am going to have child one, child two, and child three instead of spelled out A and D. And notice that this is not an Oxford comma style by default, so you're going to see no comma here. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. For refer to next item, this is going to say, if not child one, then child two. If not child two, then child three. But notice there's no period, so that's something you'd want to add in if that's something you want to use. Um, same thing you can see here with two attributes. You can see how this comes out. If not child one, you know, you could say you could add in born on September, blah, 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 then child two born on blah, blah, blah. If not this, then this. So you can kind of see how that flows. Uh, next, we have a table. So we've already gone through these few here. So if we go down to table, I'll show you, you can see that one attribute would just Put in the first question, what's the first child's name? And this comes from um, this section here. What is the child's first name? So it's pulling from that. And then it's giving you the answers here, here, here. And then from here, this is asking the two questions and giving you two columns with the information in each one relating to each child. For item number, this is where it's going to ask you which item number do you want. So it says select the item number. So you're going to choose 
item one or item two or item three or whatever else, and then it's going to insert that code for you um, depending on your answer. So in our case here, I chose contact children, child's first name for the first child. So zero is going to actually equal the first position. Um, so in the first position is child number one. So here I have child number one, um, and then I have for their two attributes, child one, and then their date of birth with no commas. So you can see kind of that this exercise is useful because each one has their own look and feel and style. Depend, you're going to choose one over the other depending on what it is you're trying to do, and you might alter them depending on what you're trying to do and how you need this to be formatted on output. Now, the last thing is around um, the ability to generate multiple documents. So when you run this particular workflow, what you can do is make multiple copies um, depending on some value or attribute. And this comes in like a couple of steps. So the first is going to be to choose what you want to have added. So let's say, for example, we go over here to our repeating item section and we go down to generate multiple documents. We need to have our um, item selected that we want and then whatever attributes you want to include. In this case, let's say I just wanted the child's first name. I would put my cursor where I want it to go. I would choose that from the options and then say insert field. And that's going to do that code for me. Now, in this particular case, you could also add two or whatever else you want. Now, what you'll do once you've finished all of your different setup, you are going to add this to the output documents tab in Gavel here by choosing your file, choosing it from the list, saying open. In my case, I already have it here. Then you're going to be able to click on it and change the name because it's going to come out like this when you first um, put it onto this output documents tab. You can also choose if you want to generate this just as a PDF or just as a Word document or both. In my case, I just want it to be a PDF doc. And I change the name to where it says repeating items, all options. And then I use this configuration in order to pull the individual first names of the children and have that associated with each of the documents that output depending on their information. So all you need to do that is to say dollar sign and then a curly bracket and then the variable that you want. In the case of this idea of generating multiple documents, you're going to add this little I here as well. And so the last piece of this is you're going to say generate multiple for and then choose the item name that you selected. In this case, contact children. If you don't do this step, you're going to get an error in your workflow. One last thing I did here was I skipped the final review page and I customized the final message to say thank you. Um, so if we run this from the top, we're going to be able to say, do you have any children? If you don't, you're going to skip through to the end and it's just going to say thank you. If you say yes, then for the child's information, let's say we're going to put um, the child's first name is Jane and their birthday is something like June 4th, 2008. We're going to say continue. We have that continuation question. Do you have any more children to add? Let's say yes. And we're going to say, we're going to say John and John was born in uh, 1999. And then we have one more and that's going to be, well, that doesn't make sense that I would have. <laughs> you say I have a daughter named after myself, but let's do something else. Let's do Sadie. And Sadie is going to be born more recently, let's say in 2020, March 5th. So we don't have any more children to add, so we'll say no. We're going to continue, and that's going to generate our documents for us. And what we should expect to see are three different documents on output and each of their names associated with them. So like I said, here we have Jane's, we have John's, and we have Sadie's documents here. And the difference between these three are going to be in that last question, which is down here. You'll see that under the generate multiple documents section, you'll see that we have Jane's information. Under John's, we have John's information only. 
and not everyone's. So this is really helpful to see how this works. And then Sadie's is going to be just Sadie's information down here at the bottom. So that's how that generate multiple documents works. And that's how all of these other um, options for formatting works when you don't change anything and you just put it directly from within the word add-in. And that will give you some clarity about how you might want to add different, um, let's say, bullet points or spaces or commas or whatever else you would need in order to format your documents the way you want them every time to be outputted. So I hope that's a useful exercise to kind of just go through and see what options are available to you when you're using repeating items to go through and create something like this where you have something that you can refer to just to get some clarity exactly how something will be output when you use it so you can visualize that when you're building as well. So just remember you can always refer back to this video or this help article or both in order to kind of review how to do all this. So I hope that was useful and I'll see you in the next video.